Isaac, give me volume here. All of us need to just give the Lord a hand praise for what this young man is doing. And you may be seated. It is my prayer that uh, on tomorrow that you will do what you should do and bring your young people here. Thank God for our wonderful youth president who is really working hard. Thank God for Sister Taylor who's been working diligently. And uh, Sister Isha who's been helping Sister uh, Cheryl. I had my first meeting with our first five restaurant owners that's coming, sponsored by the church, and all they have to do is pay their tithe on their businesses. We got, and it should be starting in just a few months, not even a few months, maybe about a month, thanks to Brother Bam, Brother Washington, Jalen, Ahmad, and a few of them, and uh, uh, um, Quint, and Jaheem, all of those that's been working. It's been a collective work to get the place done, but we've done a pretty good job, and we thank you. Bam and Washington are moving like, man, they are on speed, Holy Ghost speed. I mean, he ready to start doing the knockdown. I heard they're going to make do the knockdown tomorrow or sometime. I don't know for sure. Friday, they're going to be starting doing a knockball. I mean, already on the walls, sharing them on their way because I want a group interior decorating. So we got five restaurants. Let me explain them to you. We got one, the Dog on Burger. Boy, hey man, the Dog on Burger. That's a hamburger with a dog on it, a hot dog on it. It's the Dog on Burger. That's coming. We got the Cup of Eden is opening back up. Hey Amen. The Wang Joint. That's opening, and we have uh, Sundays and Wednesdays. We got a restaurant called Sundays and Wednesday. Mother, Mother Joanne and Mother Harris are going to be running that, so it will only be open on Sundays and Wednesdays. Sunday for for Sundays for Sunday morning service, Wednesday for Bible class, and the all the setup is good. You see, on Sunday, see, you can you can reserve whatever room you want to eat in on Sundays. The house is made just like a regular family house. And there's an executive room, which is, is, is it's a dining room, one dining room. So the house is a house. It's going to be set up like a house. But we're going to have people eating all over the house like you did at home. But we got one, yeah, we got one room. We got one room that they cook every Sunday, which is the dining room. You can reserve that space in the dining room, and they're going to have it just like Mama used to have it, all the stuff fixed on the table, sweet potatoes and greens and all oh, glory. Hallelujah. I'm getting hungry tonight. Let's go. It's Bible study time. It's Bible study time. Because just as show as Mother Harris bring that tabernacle chicken and, 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 and Sister Scott bring that dressing from Alabama, I'll be done gaining all this weight again. I'm staying away from y'all. Amen. But God bless you. This is what we're doing at Bible Way for members of the church. Amen. Now, I watched the video the other day and I'm sent the message out. I responded online and then Christy was so kind to inbox them for me. I saw the uh, Hebrew boys went down to Geno Jennings church and surrounded it and they were calling him out and he didn't come out to church so I don't know what they done. But I uh, inboxed them and I went on the page and I invited the, invited the Hebrew boys down here. Uh, we're not scared of them I dare them to come down here. That's a dare. Amen. I'm not afraid. The Bible says you ought to be able to give a, a hope of your calling. Amen. It'd be right for God to save. They'll match my office. <laughs> Fit right in. <laughs> Purple and gold. They'll get a save part and bring right on in there. And they'll make good deacons and preachers in there. Amen. They go with the office. But I've invited them over, and I'm writing an official letter because I want to debate them on certain topics. I already know who I am. I already know who the true Hebrews are. That's not the subject I want to talk about. But tonight, what I'll be teaching, and I want you to get it, how to witness to a Sabbath-day advantage. Sabbath-day advantage. How to witness to a Hebrew Israelite. And I'll be staying on this as a while because we're talking about witnessing. 
and getting folks saved. So I'll be talking about the seventh day tonight. I may tap into meat. I'm going to tap into some things about the law. Our young men need to hear it. Our young people need to hear it because uh, Hebrew boys are messing up. A lot of these folk ain't got no soundness in them. So they mess them up. Amen. And uh, so we got, we're sound in this. And because we're sound, amen, I'm going to uh, go over a few things that I think that's necessary. And uh, I want you to go with me. First of all, let me, let me give you this. Can I have the chalkboard tonight, please? Uh, make sure it's erased and ready for me to go. Thank you, Brother McMahon. Thank you, Minister Tyler. Amen. Brother Ty here. Thank God for Brother Ty. We have successfully, the Bible with builders, successfully put his roof on, successfully finished the job, and thank God for it. Got a project that we're working on. Uh, God just blessing us all over. We're a project that we're working on in Winter Haven, and uh, we're moving good. Uh, we need somebody to spell good, real good. I don't want you messed up to help me here. So some of y'all gonna come and write good. Don't be writing the wrong thing now. So I need your help tonight. First thing I want you to establish is that when when you look at the Bible, the first thing you need when you look at the Bible, if you're gonna understand the doctrine and the teachings of the Hebrew Israelites, and we're talking about witnessing, you're gonna understand the doctrine of Hebrew Israelites. You understand the doctrine of the Sabbath day advantage and all those that are seven day worshipers and non pork eaters. If you're going to understand them, the first thing that you need to understand is the Bible is written and it has a certain length of time that it covers. It's one book, but it covers several years. And in those years, you have certain laws in those years that actually change or they're different. Now, folks say, the Bible says, I'm the Lord thy God and I change not. Now, when the Lord said, I'm the Lord thy God, I change not, God is not saying he don't make change. He said he don't change. So what he means when I'm the Lord thy God, I change not. I don't change from being who I am. He's not talking about he don't change things. Go, go back to that. Go back. That's what he said because a lot of them get that mixed up. Go down to the book of Malachi. What he's saying, I'm God. I will not change from being God. That's what he's saying. All right? In the book of Malachi chapter 3 and 6, because we got folks that say, God don't change. Malachi 3 and 6, look at that. For I am the Lord. I am the Lord. I change not. What is he saying? You got to get it in content. I am the Lord. I change not. What is I don't change from being the Lord. I'm the Lord. I don't change not. That's why y'all ain't dead, Israel, because I'm God and I don't change. I don't change from being who I am. Does God change? Things. Yes. He told him, I'm going to kill y'all down there in Jonah Day, but he didn't kill him. Amen. He repented. So there are things that we'll see, and he told Hezekiah, you're going to die. But he didn't die. So he changed things, but he doesn't change from being God. That's what the point he's making there. So if I would do a history book on America, just get the laws of America and get those laws and give you that book on America, it would seem as if this country is controversial and inconsistent. If I get your book on America, because throughout time, the laws of this country has changed. And so one part of the law, if I got your laws that go all the way back to 1776 when this country was a country, I get it going back, and I'm going to give you an example, go back to 1611 and all those days, the laws of this land have changed. I'll give you an example of that. One part of the law would have said it is perfectly safe to have a black person and keep them as a slave. Travel a hundred down and read that whole book a hundred few years later, I see another part said it's illegal. Now, 
it would say over here, slavery. Now, the same thing that was slavery over here would be called human trafficking over here. Legal over here, illegal over here. <laughs> but the same law. So when you look at the Bible, you're going to see certain parts of the Bible that are going to have. I, I'll give you an example right now. We just saw a major change. For so many years, abortion was approved. Now the same country says abortion is illegal. So you're seeing the, the, the laws changing through time. It doesn't mean that God is inconsistent. It doesn't mean the Bible is not real. So I'll show you an example of that. All right, watch this, watch this. Go with me to the book of Leviticus chapter 11 and 1 so that you'll understand this. Watch Leviticus chapter 11 and 1. And if you don't understand laws and times, you'll be confused. All right? And the Lord spake unto Moses yes. and to Aaron, yes. saying unto them, yes. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, these are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Whatsoever parteth the hoof and is cloven footed and cheweth the cud among the beasts that shall ye eat. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud. Now, everybody should have your Bible so you're following with me, all right? You must around see a purple suit in front of your yard. I want you to know how to talk to him. Get your book. Get your Bible. Don't look at me. Get a Bible. Get a book. You got folk uh, in your, uh, you got folk there coming in your neighborhood, knocking on doors, coming to church. You wake up, look like a burning parade going on. You need your book. Get your Bible. So you know what I'm talking about. Amen. All right, read. Or of them that divide the hoof. Yes. As the camel, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the hoof. He is unclean unto you. And the coney, because he cheweth the cud, but divideth not the, the hoof. But these are things that God said you can't eat. He says this in the same book. Don't eat this. These are clean and unclean. Don't eat. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 4 and 1. Come on. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times shall some depart from the faith. All right, now watch. Some shall depart from the faith. All right? Because there, there, I want you to understand when, well, I'll go over that later, but when, 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 when the Jews converted to Christianity, they departed from the law and entered into the law of the spirit, which is faith. And now he said they're leaving faith, going back to law, to the natural law, to the physical law. And I'll explain that later. Read. Giving heed to seducing spirits. Giving heed to seducing spirits. And doctrines of devils. Now listen at this. Uh-huh. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. Uh-huh. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats. Yes. Which God wait, hath... Wait. Commanding to abstain from what? Meats. Meats. Uh-huh. Which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Uh-huh. For every creature of, every God, creature of God is good. Is good. And nothing, and to, be nothing refused, to be refused. If it be received with uh, thanksgiving. No, wait, 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 wait. But this sounds this sound odd because one scripture just told me what I couldn't eat. And another scripture just told me that it's okay for me to eat it. And for anybody to tell me can I, that I can't eat it is a doctrine of devil. Is the Bible contrary? Is the Bible conflicting? No. It's written over a certain amount of time. And just like I gave you that example about the United States of America, now you can't just read the Bible. When you read it, you got to know how to divide it. So you can't just read it and get an understanding. The Hebrew boy can read it. Sabbath Day Advantage can read it, but they don't know how to divide it. See, to understand it, you need to know not just how to read it, but to divide it. So when you look at, see, he didn't say, 
uh, uh, read to show yourself approval, but study, and when you're studying, you want to rightly divide it. So when you don't rightly divide this book, it looks confusing. When you don't rightly divide it, you start telling the people to do things in this side that are no longer applicable. So that's why when you look at 2 Timothy 2 and 15, look at 2 Timothy 2 and 15. Y'all with me? Study to show thyself study. approved. Now, I don't want you to read. I want you to just read. I want you to study to show yourself approved. Unto God. Unto God. A workman that needed, workman not, that needed not to be ashamed. To be ashamed. Rightly dividing. Okay. I won't go over all these tonight because I know Brother Clay know him because he's been to the college there, so he ought to have them. So I won't bother you and Marcus tonight. Because y'all went to college, y'all ought to have this, right? Rightly divided. The so word of now I can't just read it. I need to know how to divide it so it could properly be right. That's why you got the Bible has Old Testament, Gospels, and New Testament. But they divided up in some type of way for a reason. Because if all of it was the same, I wouldn't have to have no old, new, or uh, gospel. Because I wouldn't have to have nothing. It's just book. It's got an Old Testament and a New Testament and a gospel for a reason. Now I need to understand why is it written like that. So don't let anybody fool you just reading. I need to divide it. And when you divide it, there's this word that many, hallelujah, uh, Hebrew Israelites and different ones don't know. The word in the Greek is okona. All right, and that word in our English is 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and 17. Bear with me, 1 Corinthians 9 and 17. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation that of... That word now is dispensation. That word is dispensation. That's a word that you need to understand in order to write and divide it. It's called dispensation. And we want to talk about what a dispensation is. Get Ephesians chapter 1 and 10. Come on. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times. All right. Get full of, get uh, Keyshawn, uh, 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 get him a mic too. I got so many scriptures I need some readings. I want you to get them quick. When I get one, the other one can't get it. Whoever find it first. All right. Oh, you really running fast, ain't you? <laughs> Come on, boy, boy, you get that mic and I'll be on the benediction. <laughs> you got it. And you cut across my camera, too. All right? All right. So where we at? Verse 10. All right, that, read. That in the, dis that in the dispensation. I love Isaac now, huh? That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in yeah. one. All right. Dispensation deals with time. Ephesians 1 and 10. Did you read that? That's Ephesians 1 and 10. All right. Give me uh, Colossians. Give me Ephesians 3 and 2 now. You can get this. Ephesians 3 and 2. Read. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God. The dispensation of what? So grace is a dispensation. So what simply what a dispensation mean? is a time frame when a particular law is in effect. Now, we can say today, when did that Roe versus Wade, when would that come in effect? When did that come in effect? Over 50 years ago? How long? Look at it. When did we say that Roe? Say it came in 50 years ago. Now we can say now that the dispensation of Roe versus Wade is over because now it's not applicable. So that dispensation have ended. It began... A certain time. When did it become a law? Go, go, go. Somebody get it. When did it become a law? It became a law in 1973. But when did it end? As far as giving the states back authority to make decisions. What, what did that do? 2000 what? 22. So what I can say. That dispensation lasted from 73 to 22 because it began there and it ends there. So there are certain dispensations that is. Okay, give me an example. God told Adam, you should not eat every tree that you eat of. You can eat of any tree, but the tree of good knowledge is good and evil. You should, should not, not eat of it or you will die. Right? That's what he told him, right? I can eat whatever fruit I want now. I ain't got no restrictions on fruit because that dispensation ended. Because once Adam ate, 
that dispensation is. I can go eat whatever I want. I ain't got to be nothing. I don't, don't eat that because God said don't eat that fruit. I can eat bananas. I can eat grapes, whatever I want. Because that dispensation of ended. And when I understand dispensation, it helps me. Now, now, go with me to the book of Romans so you can get this. Uh, uh, and, and I want you to, let me, let me say this. When you're looking and you're reading the book of Romans, this is Paul now trying to have a conversation because what's happening in the church, who got saved in the church first initially, who got saved in the church were Jews, Hebrews. Now the problem is you got Gentiles coming in the church with Hebrews, and the Hebrews are trying to now get the Gentiles to adjust to their old laws. Because there was one time it was only the Hebrews, but now God has allowed the Gentiles to come in at the same time. Now I want you to get this. Watch the book of Romans chapter 10, Romans 10 and 7. Uh, Romans 10 in effect to just what I said. The law has a beginning, but in Romans chapter 10, and verse 4, what does it say? For Christ is the end of the law. For Christ is the what? End of the law. For Christ, wait, did y'all got that in your Bible? For Christ is the end of the law. Uh -huh. for, for righteousness uh -huh. to everyone that believeth. Now, Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Christ is the end of the law. What do you mean he's the end of it? Well, when he say he's the end of it, it doesn't mean, I want you to get this good, because we don't teach that the law is no longer kept. We teach that the law is fulfilled and kept differently. It's not kept like it was then. It's kept differently. I'll show you the difference is. See, the Christ is the end of the law, but then Christ said, I didn't destroy it. I fulfilled it. Give me the book of Romans chapter 5 and 17. So I still believe and keeping the law, but I don't keep the law the same way. I don't keep it in the flesh. I keep the law based upon the spirit. I'm going to give you the spiritual application of it. Get me the book of, uh, 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 I want Matthew 5 and 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. I, I didn't come to destroy it, but I did what? Or the prophets. Or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, uh -huh. but to fulfill. But I'm going to fulfill it. Now, what did it mean, fulfill it? He said, thank not that I've come to destroy, but to fulfill. Let me give you an example about fulfillment. All right? I, I, I prophesied, if I prophesied and said, listen, I prophesied and said, thus said the Lord. All right? Uh, 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 Jeremiah is going to stand up and bring me his Bible. Come on, don't make me no false prophet. Come on. <laughs> he gave me his Bible. Go oh, sit down, please, sir. Now, he doesn't have to stand up and bring me his Bible no more because it's been fulfilled. The prophecy that's been fulfilled, it doesn't have to be fulfilled no more. It's done. Yes. <laughs> so then, hallelujah. When the prophecy come to pass, it's fulfilled. Now, I say Christ is the end of the law. How does he end the law? When he fulfilled it. I'll give you an example how he ended one law. Give me the book of Romans chapter 12. I mean, if, uh, uh, Exodus chapter 12 and 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt. All right, cut him up some. Uh -huh. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you, the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speaking unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb. Write that down. They're going to take every man a what? A lamb. A lamb. According to the house of their fathers. According to the house of their fathers. A lamb for an house. Uh -huh. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Uh -huh. Every man according to his eating shall make your account for the lamb. Uh -huh. Your lamb shall be without blemish. A male of the first of year, he, he shall take it out from All the right. sheep. You're going to take a lamb. You're going to kill him. Give me Jeremiah chapter, uh, uh, Leviticus chapter 23 and 5. And, 
In the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. All right, uh, Minister Talex, do me a favor, son. The 14th day is the Lord's what? Passover, huh? And on the 15th day of the same month uh -huh. is the feast of unleavened bread unto uh -huh. the Lord. Yes. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. Uh -huh. In the first day ye shall have an holy convocation. Yea, ye shall do no ser servile work therein. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire okay. unto the Lord. So every, every year they had to do what? They had to kill a lamb, right? And they had to offer that lamb up there to eat that lamb, right? That was the lamb. They had to do that. Now, Christ not only fulfills prophecy, but he also fulfills the law. Hmm. Now, how does he fulfill the law? Give me the book of John chapter 1 and 29. So now, when I read John 1 and 29, I had to go get a lamb and kill it, right? Get John 1 and 29. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb I don't of God. I'm not going to get no lamb no more. Why? Because Jesus became the lamb. He fulfilled that. So now I don't have to go in the bushes looking for no lamb. Because he fulfills that. He fulfills the law. They had to keep the Passover, right? Was that necessary? They had to keep the Passover. That was the law. It is kept. We still do believe you got to get a lamb, but it ain't the one in the bushes. He's already come. So we do keep that law, but we don't keep it like they did it there. See, we still have transportation. We just don't ride horses. So the law is kept, but it's not kept like it was then. It's kept through the spirit. My God, somebody say hallelujah. Whew, you with me? All right, watch this. They had to keep the Passover, right? Go with me to Corinthians. Second Corinthians. Five. I want five. First Corinthians 5 and 7. Uh-huh. Purge, purge out, therefore, the old leaven. Okay, I want you to get rid of the old leaven. That ye may be a new lump. That you may be a new lump. As ye are unleavened. As ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our even, Passover. Even Christ, our what? Passover. So, do we believe in keeping the Passover? Yes. Do we believe in eating the lamb? Yes. But now the lamb is already killed, so all I got to do now is take communion. Take, eat. This the lamb now. So we still keep it, but we don't keep it the way they kept it then because now, see, give you an example of what it is, okay? All right, I'm going to give you Old Testament and New. Uh, 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 come here, son, hold this mic for me. This is uh, cups on, cups on me. Okay, so you see this building? All right, I. It's a large building here that's built. I'm going to give you an example. Let me, let me give you this. Go with me. Uh, let's, let's, let's go further. He's going to get that for me. Uh, give me another example. Circumcision. Okay. Don't you get circumcision? That was an Old Testament law. <laughs> How do we keep circumcision? Go down to the book of Romans chapter 2 and 25. New Testament circumcision because the Lord wanted to circumcise the point of conception. The, the, the penis is where uh, conception and, and, and having the sex with the woman is where conception began. So what God wanted is the man to circumcise his skin. Uh, look at the book of, uh, uh, look quickly at the book of Exodus. Ex uh, Genesis, I'm sorry. I got you all over every place. Genesis. 
17. And 11. Uh-huh. All right, read it. And you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. So I want the foreskin of the penis circumcised. Why? Because that's where conception happens. Well, there's a spiritual conception that's born. That's a spiritual concept. Where you born? Where, where birth? Where, where born again? Start in the heart. So now God says circumcision is not, and not on the penis no more. There's a spiritual circumcision that takes place. Watch, watch, watch. Go, go over to the book of uh, Genesis, uh, uh, Acts five. So where's the spiritual place of circumcision? Acts five, and one. Acts five and one. Thank you, son. Uh huh. What does it say? But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price. His wife uh -huh. also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart uh -huh. to lie to the Holy Ghost uh -huh. and to keep back part of the price of the land? Uh -huh. Whilst it remained... Was it not, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Mm -hmm. Why has thou conceived this hold thing? On, that, look at that word. That's the same word you did with birth. Why has thou conceived? So the heart is really somewhat like the spiritual uh, 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 penis. Uh, conception beginning at the heart. So now what God wants you to circumcise is not your penis but your heart. All right, get Romans chapter 2 and 25. Look at this. For circumcision verily profiteth if thou keep the law, but if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Uh -huh. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? Uh -huh. And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, Judge thee. Uh, all right. I want you to get this. Let me give you this. I want you to see this. All right. I want you to get, because I want you to see where it is. All right. Get me. Romans 3. Let's go down to here. Now the heart is the place. What is it? First Corinthians what? Romans 2 and what? 29. That's what I want. Circumcision 1, what, what, Romans 2 and 29. Look what it says. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart. Circumcision is where? That of the heart. Wait, wait, wait. Where is circumcision? Of the heart. So do we believe in circumcision? Do we keep circumcision? Yes. But how do we do? How do we circumcise? Do we take a, a stone and, and cut the penis? No, we circumcise the heart. But this is powerful because he gives us everything that we need now, in the Old Testament, watch this, when they circumcised, they had to circumcise with something. I want you to see how they circumcised. All right? Go to the book of Exodus chapter 4. All right? Fourth chapter. Of chapter verse 25. Everybody follow me? Then Sephora took a sharp get, get, stone. Get, get, get the verse above it. And it came to pass, by the way, in the end, that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Then Sephora 
took a sharp stone. Took a sharp what? Stone. Stone. And cut off the foreskin of her son. And what did she do with that stone? She cut off the what? All right, so we need to be circumcised. We need that stone. Jesus is a stone. <laughs> go get me, go get me Acts 4 and 11. This is the stone. So now we need something to cut. Now they had a sharp stone to cut the penis. Now we got a sharp stone to cut the heart. Now it becomes a spiritual application and not a natural application. So do we believe in circumcised? Yes. But we don't circumcise the penis. We circumcise the heart and we got a sharp stone to do it. Yes, Hallelujah. Get Acts 4 and 11. Read. This is the this stone. This is the stone. Which was set this at night. This is the stone. This is the stone. Now, the stone is also the word. And the word is powerful, sharper, woo, than any two-edged sword. So now I got the stone, which is the word, and I use that to circumcise the heart. It's spiritual now. Put that rock down off your penis and get the stone on your heart, buddy. Woo! Get me in the book of Hebrews. This making any sense? I hope y'all got this. Hallelujah! Four, four. Hebrews. Four and twelve. For the word of, God, the word of God is quick, quick. and powerful, powerful. Sharper, sharper than any two edged sword. Go back over there to Exodus chapter four. Pick up where your words in Exodus four. Four and twenty four. Read. And it came to pass. By the way, in the end, that the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Then Sephora took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at his feet. Just like God was looking for Moses to kill him because he didn't circumcise his son, which was death. He was looking for you to kill you too because the wages of sin is death. But I grabbed the hole of a stone called the word of God, circumcised my heart, and he let me go. Yes. We got book now. Come on here. We got book now. So what you have now is Shakadiyata. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8 has the law of the spirit. The law is there. We keep the law, but the law has become spiritual. Read. Uh-huh. Romans 8 and 1. There is, there is therefore now no condemnation. There is no condemnation. To them which are in Christ, Jesus, in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the now, flesh. Now what does it mean walk after the flesh? That ain't talking about drinking and smoking. That's really not what we're talking about. We're talking about walking after the flesh. Walking after keeping those laws after the flesh. Hmm. I'm not trying to keep them after the flesh, wait. But after the but spirit. After the spirit. For the so law. I'm not keeping them after the flesh. There's a spiritual application. Yes, sir. Cool. Let me give you what I'm talking about so you can get it. Come on with this mic, son. Hallelujah. Get this now so you can get it. This is a plan. That was built, that was drawn. Over 15 years ago. There was no bill in here when this was wrong, 15, 20 years ago. Come here, Brother Mac, Mac, please. It wasn't here. And as long as this wasn't here, hold that there. Get the, get, I want you to get it on here. Turn that there. Turn it here. Now, these plans have been over there for some years. All right? Hold that too. Hold that, fella. 
holding together because I don't want them to tear up. But my goodness, look at that. That's the temple. Now, it was originally supposed to be built that way when the Holy Ghost told me how to do it. Come on, boy. Hold this thing over here. This is the lobby. That's that room over there. That's that room over there. That's the bathroom, bathroom. You see it clearly. That's Jackie. That's, that's the prayer room. All these rooms. Before this building was built, if anybody wanted to ask me where the room is, I had to point to that. This is the law. But once the building is built, I don't need that no more. I can take you to the building. So now the law was an example of what was to come. Glory to God. This is not the real thing. It is a type and shadow of what's coming. Go down to the book of Colossians. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, when you get Colossians, Holy Ghost, I feel you. All right. Two and fifteen. And having spoiled principalities and powers. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Uh, all right, photos up good. All right, give them back to Minister Tylex. All right, read it. And having spoiled principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in and that, it. Well, yeah, two and what? Two and sixteen now. Two and sixteen. Let now no watch two and sixteen and look at what he talks about. Read. Let no man therefore let, don't let nobody therefore judge you in judge meat. Judge you in meat. Don't let nobody tell you what you can and cannot eat. Right. Don't let them judge you. Or in drink. And don't let nobody tell you what you can drink. Or in respect of an holy or day. Or in respect of a holy day. Or of the new moon. Of a new moon. Or of the Sabbath uh, day. Don't let them bother you about them because them ain't, that's only the blueprint. Y'all got the building now. Read. Which are a shadow. Which are a shadow. Of Wait, things to it's come. It's a shadow. It's a shadow. Oh, powerful. So all that stuff is a shadow. The, the Sabbath day. The fringes, and I'm going to show you how all of them were shadows. The circumcision was a shadow. St stand up with you, Will, Will Ellis Smith, if you will. I want you to stand here. Anybody got a flashlight? Just stand there. Cut, cut, the, cut the lights off, if you will. Cut them off. Cut them off. Somebody cut the ones off there, if you will. Cut them off. Can I hold your light? Cut them off. Cut, cut them off. All right. Y'all with me? Now, I'm going to share what a shadow is. Now, I want y'all to understand what a shadow is. Come over this way. Come over this way. All right. Turn over that way. See, I'm going to tell you what produces a shadow. Now, there's a shadow there. And the Bible say it's a shadow of the things to come. You see the shadow? Now, shadows are produced because it's trying to show through something but it can't show because something is in the way. Oh, glory. You see? And I only get shadows because something is in the way. Move, Brother Spence. There's no more shadow. Now you got light. The law was a shadow. It was standing in the way of the light. So you couldn't really see the truth, but what the law did, see, the law projects the shadow of the real. And before the real comes, you see, Brother Smith's shadow is in front of him. So before the real comes, the shadow goes ahead of him. The law preceded the real. So the law was in front of Jesus, but Jesus was really what made the shadow. Come on here, cut that light back on. Heshatatabakaya. So the law had to come before Jesus. That's why Jesus said, I am the light 
of the world. And as soon as the shadow got out of the way, you could see the light. When the law moved, you could see Jesus. Read what it said, read. Which are a shadow, Which are a shadow of, things to come. of things to come. But the body, the body is of Christ. Is of Christ. Put your hand together. <laughs> Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10.1. For the law, having a shadow of good things. Ah, there's that word again. The law, having a shadow. Uh huh. Of good things to come. Uh, of what? Good things to come. Uh huh. And not the very image of the things can never, with those sacrifices which they Let's offer. Go back now. I want you to get this. I won't go back over there to Romans chapter eight. So everything spiritual now. Is everybody understanding? Does make any sense? Y'all got it clear? Now go back to Romans chapter, chapter 8 now. You'll see that the law is kept spiritual. Romans chapter 8 and 1. Now, there is, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of, for the, law of the spirit. Stop. See, what Moses gave was the law of the flesh. But now God talks about the law of the spirit, which takes the law of the flesh and turns it into spiritual things. So now we're dealing with the law of the spirit and not the law of the flesh. It's powerful. And the way Mo, I like, I like how, how he puts this, and how, how Paul puts these chapters together, which is very powerful. And you got to see this, how he put them together, because what Paul does, he's going to now describe the law in a marriage. He describes it in a marriage because God was married to Israel. Get Romans chapter 6. Romans 6. Let's start at 6. First thing he does, Paul is saying that we have to die. He says Jesus died and we die. Get Romans chapter 6 and 1. Read. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin? That grace may abound, God forbid. How shall we that are dead to How sin? How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Now, why, why is Paul talking about death in sixth chapter, marriage in seventh chapter, and the law of the spirit in eight? It's very powerful, so you're gonna understand it. Read. Dead to sin live any longer therein. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized unto his death. Uh -huh. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism. So Paul says, you died and Jesus died. When you got baptized, he died, you died and he died. And then Paul goes over now in Romans chapter 7 because what he wants to do, what he's telling uh, the Romans so that the Jews could understand and the Romans could understand is that there was a covenant of the law with Israel and he was married to them. And in Jeremiah chapter 3, but when God became flesh, he died in the flesh. That flesh represented God in flesh, and that flesh died, and then he tells us to get baptized, and we die, which means whatever we had before as an established law no longer exists because both of us died. You're married as long as they live, but when they die, the law of that marriage or the covenant of that marriage is over. So as long as Jesus walked the earth and lived, he was married to Israel. That's why he said, don't go in the way of the Gentiles. But once he died, that released the law. And that law now is no longer in effect like that. Now, he goes over to Romans chapter 7 and 1, and you got something now. Uh -huh. Know ye not, brethren, uh -huh. for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law have dominion over a man so long as he liveth. Uh -huh. For the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to bound her husband. The, what? the law. Israel was bound by that law. Uh huh. To her husband. To her husband. So long as he lived. So long as he was alive and walked the earth, they were bound to that. Read. But. But. If the husband be dead. If, wait, 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 wait. Stop. Go to Jeremiah. If 
if her what? Husband be dead. If her husband. All right. Uh, I want to. Isaiah 54 and 5. If her husband be what? Isaiah 54 and 5. Read it. For, the, for thy, maker thy maker is thine husband. Is thy husband. Woo! Glory. Thy maker is thy husband. So whoever made you is your husband. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. All things were made by him. He is the maker. And the word was made flesh. So if he's the maker, the make, word made flesh. And he died. The husband died. And when the husband died, she was free from the law. When Jesus died, they were free from that law. And he died, but he gets up and gets him a new bride. Yes, sir. Makes a new law, which is spiritual. So now we keep the laws, but we don't keep them through the flesh. Yes, because now the relationship is spiritual. Yes, now they're kept through the spirit. Yes, and now we got to find out what those spiritual applications of those laws are. So now we search through the Bible, find out what the law was. Now let's find out what the spiritual was. Ah, let me give you an example. I'll give you an example. All right? Y'all follow me? Any questions at this point? All right. One of the things many of the Hebrew boys talk about is fringes. Put on your fringes. Where are your fringes? They asked me the other day, say, where are your fringes? All right? Okay? Y'all see that, right? Y'all heard of that? Fringes mean the bottom of your clothes, you know, you have these little things laid out underneath them, all these little tassels. If you want to wear them, fine, but don't tell me I'm going to hell because I ain't got them. While I'm here, I'm going to just, just take a break and go right off, exit uh, here. I'm going off the, on the exit and I'm coming back in. Because the next time when I'm asking you, do you have on fringes, I ask them, do they have on frontlets? Because I see all of them with the fringes but no frontlets. A frontlet was a little box that they had to wear in their face all the time. It was a box. Yes, so not only did they have to wear fringes, but they had to wear frontlets between their eyes. I'm going to go back and show Matter of fact, while I'm there, let me show you this now. Go around Deuteronomy chapter 11 and 18. So they were commanded to wear frontlets, which was a little box that had the commandments that they wore right before their face. So when you see, when you see them, they had this box right between their eyes. You don't see them with that now. What it says. Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your hand. Okay, you gotta have it. You gotta have them on your hand. You gotta have a sign on your hand. Uh -huh. That they may be as frontlets between thine eyes. And now you gotta walk around with frontlets between your eyes. So the guy that's bothering you about the fringes, ice and where is his frontlets and where's his strap around his arm? That's right. Because he was supposed to walk around with a little box around there with the commandments in it. I gotta find out what that is. What is the frontlets now between my eyes? What is it they want me to keep now between my eyes? All right, get me the book of Hebrews chapter 2 and 12 and 2. Uh-huh. Looking unto Jesus. Oh, that's my front list now. Looking unto Jesus. The author. The author. And that's finisher. That's front list now. I ain't got to have that little box around me. That's the front list. I got that. Well, what about the fringe? This is a garment that you put on, right? Get the book of Numbers chapter 15, 37. Read. This make sense? All right, read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. So what did fringes look like? God wanted them to remember one where they came from, and then he wanted to keep them to remember the commandments. So God now has got fringes. It look like ragged clothes. Look like slave clothes. You know, ragged at the bottom. They tore up no hymns, you know. Uh-huh, read. Throughout their generations, uh -huh. and that they put them upon the fringe of the borders and ribbon of blue, uh -huh. and it shall be unto you a fringe, that uh -huh. you may look upon it, and remember all the commandments of the Lord. All right, Deuteronomy 22 and 12, read.
Thou shalt make thee fringes upon the four quarters of thy vesture. You're going to make fringes on the four corners of your vestures. Wherewith thou coverest thyself. What do we put on now? What are the fringes now? What is the clothes that God commands us to put on now? Well, Romans chapter 13 and 14, I want you to put on something now. This is the spiritual application. Now, Romans 13 and 14, read. But put ye on the Lord put Jesus on Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. Now that's what you put on. So instead of that little outfit that you got on with them fringes hanging out of it, put on Christ. How you put them on? Galatians chapter 3 and 27. Read. Three and twenty-seven. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, as many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Ah, so now I don't put on friends. I put on Christ. Now, there's a scripture. I want you to watch this. Deuteronomy twenty-five and four. This is powerful. Look at Deuteronomy twenty-five and four. And then I got a few more things, and I'm gonna take some questions. Twenty-five and four. Now this is the natural. Twenty-five and four. Read. Thou shalt not muzzle the ox. Wait, don't muzzle the ox. When he treated out the when corn. When he treaded out the corn. Don't muzzle the ox when he treaded out the corn. Well, we've got to find where this New Testament ox is. I'm an ox. So the ox now is the pastor. Yes, sir. So now the ox is not a physical ox. I become that ox. Oh, wait. Prove it. First Corinthians Chapter 9, now you see how the natural becomes spiritual. Nine and verse 9. For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Uh -huh. Doeth God take care of for oxen? Or saith he it all together for our sakes. For our sakes, no doubt. So how do I keep that law? Don't muzzle the ox that threaded out the corn. By giving to the man of God that pastor me, he becomes that ox. So if the church prospers, the church should give him something. Why it's prospering. I can prove it. First Timothy chapter 5 and 17. The ox now becomes the man of God. First Timothy 5, 17. Watch what it says. Let the elders that rule well. Let the elders that rule well. Be counted worthy be of counted double honor. Of double honor. Especially they, especially they who labor in the Timothy word. First Timothy 5 and 17. Especially they who labor in the word. And doctrine. And doctrine. For the scripture said. Now this is the proof that this is what that scripture said. For the scripture said. Thou shalt not thou muzzle, shalt not the, muzzle ox the ox that treaded so out the corn. I am the ox that he was talking about over there. It becomes spiritual. You got to get out of the flesh and come in the spirit. So when God says come out of the flesh into the spirit, he's actually saying come out of trying to do that the fleshly way and do it the spiritual way. That's what he's saying. Lift your hands and say hallelujah. Lift your hands and say hallelujah. Lift up your hands and say hallelujah. Somebody ought to, he ought to be grateful for the truth. Now, I'm almost done here. Now you got to know how to talk to him. Does this make sense? Well, let's deal with this Sabbath day. First thing that you need to establish, the Sabbath day was not. The seventh day was not a day of worship, it was a day of rest. See, the Bible was full of laws and the laws in the Old Testament, they were national laws or nation laws and not just spiritual laws. Most of them wasn't spiritual laws. There was natural laws for a nation and the law is divided up in different sessions. Today, there are laws in this country. There are, there are civil laws, there are building laws. There are health laws. When we get ready to build, we got to go through the health department and all these other things because there are different aspects of the law. And then there are labor laws. Let me, let me give you an example. You know, you got building laws. You got there were building laws in the Bible. Uh, I hear a lot of the, uh, uh, there was a CDC in the Bible. The CDC, Centers for Disease Control. Go to the book of Leviticus. I'm going to give you that. Then I'm going to go to the labor law. 
the Veragas. I'm going to show you the CDC. All right, 13 and 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, When a man shall have in the skin of his flesh a rising, a scab, or bright spot, and it be in the skin of his flesh, uh -huh. like the plague of leprosy, uh -huh. then he shall be brought unto Aaron the priest, or unto one of his sons the priest, and the priest shall look on the plague in the skin of his flesh, and when the hair in the plague is turned white, and the, four. They're going to look at him. He's going to this Centers for Disease Control. If the bright spot be white on the skin of his flesh and in, the, and in sight be not deeper than the skin and the hair thereof, thereof be not turned white, then the priest shall shut him, shall shut up him that hath the that plague. Your Center for Disease Control, shut him up, lock him up, quarantine. We're going to make him wear a mask too. 14 verse, read. And when raw flesh appeareth on 40, him. 40, 45, I'm sorry. 13, 45. And the leper in whom the plague is, his clothes shall be rent and his head bare. And he shall put a covering upon his upper lip. That's a covering. Face mask. Centers for disease control in the Bible. They got a billing department. Go down there. They got billing laws. Follow me. I'm almost done. Deuteronomy 20, 28. Now, I, I was over there with Hebrew boys. Shag like me, Shag men ago, we was over there in St. Pete. And while he was over there, Ty Lex there was with me. I was over there with him. And the boys tell me, say, uh, uh, where your friend is? I said, where your battlement on your house? Because the same book that talk about them friends said when you build a house, you're supposed to have a battlement on it. All right, 22 and 8, read. When thou buildest a new house. When you build a house. Then thou shalt make a battlement for I thy roof. I want you to put a battlement on it. That thou bring not blood upon thy I house. I want you to put a battlement on your roof. So everyone that bothers you about some friends, ask them, where's your battlement on top of your house? That was the building law for a nation. You got the health law, you got the building law. Are y'all with me? Everybody follow me? I got some of these laws y'all sisters might like after a while. Oh, that the building law? Follow me just a little bit. Well, we got that building law. I want you to go with me. We got agricultural laws. Well, let's deal with the civil law. I won't go with that. Let's go with agriculture laws. 23, 24, and 1. Deuteronomy. When the man have taken a wife and married her. Okay, 24 and 1. Deuteronomy 24 and 1. All right, that's divorce court. Let's go to, we'll go to divorce law. Uh-huh. When a man have taken a wife and marry her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes, because he have found some uncleanness in her, then let him write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand, mm -hmm. and, send her, and send her out of and his that house. Was Moses, that was Moses' law. He brought that divorcement law under the Old Testament law. This was the divorcement law. Read. And when she is departed out of his house, she may go and be another man's oh, wife. Oh, no. gee, they like to go back over there. That's Old Testament court law. But Jesus came in. He said, I got something new for you, buddy. That's what Moses had for you. We'll go to that Luke 16, 18. I'm not going to go over all of them, but Luke 16, 18. Whosoever putteth away his wife and married another committeth adultery. Mm -hmm. And whosoever married her that is put away from her husband committeth adultery. I think I like, I got one that y'all will like. And then we'll go on. I'm going to go to that second. Y'all love that child support law. Let's go to that child support law. 
Deuteronomy 21 and 5. If a man had a, had a baby, he had a first wife, or had two wives, uh, whatever he had, a, a wife, or a, a sneaky link, whatever they call it. Yeah, he had one, and then he had a baby before. Then when he got his new lady, he don't like the baby that he had before. And he want to slide, you know, do that baby before, you know, don't want to treat the baby right. God, he, God made it where the first baby that he didn't like, he had to get that baby twice as much. So if he gave the one baby 100, he had to get the other baby mama 200. If he gave her five, he had to give her 1,000. That was child support. Deuteronomy 21 15. Let's look at this child support here. God's child support was pretty rough. 21 15, read. If a man have two wives, if a man have two wives, one beloved, one beloved, and another behave, one another hated. Like, one of them like, but he doesn't he hate the other one. Uh, read. And they have born him children. They have born him children. Both the beloved and the hated. Both the one that he loved and the one he hates. He got one of them he loved, but he hates the other one. He hates us. Uh -huh, and read. if the firstborn son be hers that God, is hated. This is God's child support law. Baby mama drummer. Right in the Bible. Read. Then shall then it shall be. It shall be. When he maketh his sons to inherit. When he leave his sons inheritance. That which he had. That which he had. That he may not he make may the son. Not give the son. Of the beloved. Of the beloved. Firstborn. Firstborn. Before the son of the hated. He can't get his money before. Oh, the son of the hate. He can't get the child that he hate got to get his first. Read. Which is indeed the firstborn. Yes. But he shall acknowledge the son he, of the hated. He gonna acknowledge the son of the lady that he don't hate, that he hate. He don't like her. Read. For the firstborn. No, for the firstborn. By giving him By a giving double portion. Him a double portion. Of all that he had. My God child support wasn't no plaything there, boy. You got to give him double. Amen. That's why, watch this now, watch this. I'm going to give you this and I'm going to get it. But you'll see how this works. That's why Leo, hallelujah, glory to God. Glory to God. Leo, he had two, uh, two, two, two wives. Leo was hated. Y'all with me? Was not Leo hated? Y'all with me? And Jesus was a lion of the tribe of what? Judah. She got a double portion. She was hated. But the hated woman had Judah. Glory to God. That's something we'll go back over that later. Now I want you to look at this thing. Let's go to this Sabbath. This is where I'm going to end with this Sabbath. Give me the book of Matthew chapter 11 and 28. This was the labor law. The Sabbath was a labor law. Give me, give me Exodus, I'm sorry. And then I'll take some questions. I hope you got this plain. Exodus 20 and verse number 8. I don't have all time to give it to you. I'll just give you what I got and i get out of your way. Remember the Sabbath day uh -huh. to keep it holy. This is how you keep the Sabbath holy. Six days. Not get your Bible and go to church. They say there but none is not. Six days shall thy labor, thy labor, and do all thy work. Do all thy work. But the seventh day, the seventh day, is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. The Sabbath of the Lord thy God. And it, it was illegal to work seven days straight. I want you to take the Sabbath day to rest, to go to sleep. Take you some rest. Get you some rest. Read. In it. Thou shalt not do any work. In it, it wasn't about what you should do. It was about what you shouldn't do. Thou shalt not do any work. It didn't say, thou shalt go to church. Thou shalt go to service. It said, thou shalt go home and go to sleep. In it, you'll do no work. Uh -huh. Thou Thou, nor thy son, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy daughters, uh -huh. thy manservant, thy manservant, nor thy maid servant. Ah, so what it was is this about? It was about what? Rest. Now, give me the book of Rome, uh, Matthew eleven and twenty eight. Now you see the power of what Jesus is doing, and I'll end in this. I got more to say on this, but look at Matthew eleven twenty eight. Jesus says, "Come unto me." Don't wait till Saturday. 
Come unto me. All ye that labor. Don't wait till the seven day. Come unto me. Because this is how this is going to be fulfilled. Now, come unto me, all ye. That labor, that labor and are heavy laden, and, heavy laden and, I and I will give you I'll rest. I'll give you rest. Don't wait on the Sabbath day. The rest is in me now. Now, he made that clear. Watch how Jesus, how Jesus just messed his mind up. Because Jesus said, coming to me, all you that heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. And after he established what the true Sabbath is, he goes and break it according to what the old Sabbath was. Now, watch 12 and 1. Read. At that time... Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn. <laughs> uh -huh. And his disciples were in hunger. Yes. And began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. Yes. But when the Pharisees saw it, uh -huh. they said unto him, uh -huh. Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful they to do. do. Which is not what? Lawful. Why are they going in the cornfields and doing that? Because they understand the new Sabbath. Jesus just said, Come unto me, all you that labor and have labor, and I'll give you rest. So they. That's our Sabbath now. Go on out there and get your coin. Now, I'm going to show you that that was against the law. I'll show you that was against the law. Let me show you that was against it. I'm going to show you. Because the Bible says in the book of Exodus 16, when God read manna down, manna down from heaven, they were not to go on the Sabbath day and pick up the manna in the fields. They were supposed to pick up twice as much on the sixth day so they wouldn't have to get it on the Sabbath day. Read. Uh huh. 29. Uh huh. See, for that the Lord hath given ye the Sabbath. Watch. Therefore, he giveth you on the sixth day the bread of two days. Yes. Abide ye every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh. Uh huh. So the people rested uh -huh. on the seventh day. What, what is this they're eating? What's the name of this that they're eating? Anybody know what they were eating then? It was called manna. All right? Go to the book of uh, uh, Psalms 28 and 24. What they was eating is manna, and manna is corn. It's cornbread. It's corn. Look at Numbers 78, what I say, 24? Uh, uh, 78, 24, read. Psalms 78, 24. Come on. And had rained down manna upon them to eat. He rained down manna from them to, for them to eat. And had given them of the corn of heaven. What was the manna? The corn of heaven. And in, in, in Exodus chapter 16, 29, he said, don't go out on the Sabbath day to get it. Go back to Exodus 16, 29, and manna was corn. Are y'all agreeing with me that was corn? All right. And what he said, Exodus 16, 29. Come on. See for that the Lord hath given you the Sabbath. Therefore he giveth you on the sixth day the bread of two days. Abide ye every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. So what would they have been going out there to get? Manna, which was what? Corn. Now when you go back to Exodus, uh, uh, Matthew chapter 12, what was they out there getting? Matthew chapter 12 and 1. On the Sabbath. Read. At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the corn. Through the corn. So Jesus is in the corn field, which Exodus say, don't go out there and get corn on the Sabbath day. So according to that, Jesus had broke that fleshly law because he was the fulfillment of the spiritual law. And now we keep that Sabbath through him. Now let me give you this last scripture. Get John 5. And then I'll take questions. I, I, I will, I'm excited, so I'll keep going, so I'm going to stop. John 5. All right. 517. And it ain't that I'm giving too much. Your stomach just too small. <laughs> Amen. John 517. You know, the older you get, the bigger your stomach gets. <laughs> oh, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me take that back a little bit, right? <laughs> All right, John 5, 7. You got that for me, Sherry, about the building? Uh, 5, 5, 17, what it says, uh-huh. But Jesus answered them, My father worketh there hither unto, and I work. Now, they watch this, uh-huh. 
Therefore, the Jews sought the more to kill him because he not only had broken the now, now Sabbath. Notice, the Jews are not saying he broke the Sabbath. This is a narration of what happened from John, the writer. The writer said not only had he broken the Sabbath, but said also did that he, who say he broke the Sabbath? Who said he broke? John, the writer, says not only had he broken the Sabbath. Some people like to say the Jews said, no, John is the narrator. Not only had he broken, he said, therefore the Jews, so this is not the Jews talking, this is John talking about the Jews. Therefore the Jews. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him because he had not because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, uh -huh. making himself equal with God. Uh -huh. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, uh -huh. the son can do nothing right. of That's himself. Great. That's great. We're good. Did everybody get that? Everybody got an understanding of that? Let me get any question. Anybody got a question for me? Anybody? Got a yes, sir. Give him a mic, please. Give him a mic. Let me hear your question. Uh, That's funny. Cut that him you up. That's amazing that you're going over that because it was Monday. I was witnessing to a Hebrew Israelite at my job. Uh, he was saying, you know, what tribe are you? And I had told him, I said, well, if it's about tribe, why did Jesus go tell the uh, disciples and apostles to go preach to every living creature? And when I said that, he was stuck. He couldn't give me no other answer from it. But for, for one thing, it is not the color of Jesus' skin that saves you. It's not the color black, it's the color red. His blood saved us. I'm, now, we need to know this for our history, and we need to know this so we know who we are. But you're not saved by the skin of Jesus, you're saved by the blood. You're not saved by his skin, you're saved by his blood. Now, we need to understand our nationality, and I think we need to know the history of who we are so we have better understanding. But you're not saved by his skin, you're saved by his blood. His blood cleans you, not his skin. Amen. Somebody say amen. All right, any other question? Any other question? Any other question? This man. <laughs> well, some of them ain't got that problem, mother. <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? All right, God bless you. I hope the word of God open your heart, open your mind. And as I said, and I make this invitation, I said very clearly, I want to get this all to the to the brothers in purple. I want all of y'all to hear me. And this is this this and I want this to be known clear. I don't care who get it, don't care where it goes. This is 3707 Avenue in the Church of God, the Bible way of the apostolic faith. I don't care if you're from the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, Ezekiel, whatever tribe you're from. Come on down here. Amen. Where the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. We're not afraid. We're not intimidated. We got the book, we got the Bible, and we'll back up everything we're saying. Amen. God bless you. Everybody put your hand together and give God praise. Any questions? You got any questions from Facebook? No question. God bless you. No question from YouTube. God bless you. It's a sealed deal. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, you come out here. I'm on. You come out here. You come on down here. I ain't going to stay in my office. Come on down here. I ain't going to hide. Come on down here. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, we'll come right on out. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs>